Afternoon everybody. Now I'm coming back to the First World War. We've been discussing in great detail what was going on over in Europe through the first half of the war. We haven't really touched much of what was happening over on this side of the pond. Now let's start with the United States and its leader. Woodrow Wilson, he was in a very unique situation. He was the only U.S. president who was actually, two different points of his life, was a member of two different countries. He was born in Virginia in December of 1856. And so in 1861, when Virginia seceded, he was no longer a member of the United States. He was a member of the Confederate States of America. And then when he was older in 1865, he was actually a member of the United States again. So, and he lived in several places in the South. He lived in South Carolina. And eventually he wound up moving North up to, into New Jersey, where he would actually go on to be the only U.S. president who had actually achieved receiving a PhD. Most of the pre many of the presidents recently have gone to college. He's the only one who actually wouldn't be known as receiving a doctorate. And he would go on to become president of Princeton University. And what he would do is he would actually turn the school around because it was well known as an Ivy League party school for a long period of time where he actually turned it around to where it became a very well-known school for academics. So he actually turned that around. And then he went on to become governor of the state of New Jersey. And that's the only time he actually held public office before running for president in 1912. <clears throat> now, what happened in that election is similar in some regards to what happened in the 1860 election, where he came in as a big time underdog, same as Lincoln, but the other side was fighting amongst themselves. Howard Taft, the Republican nominee, uh, Theodore Roosevelt's handpicked successor, Roosevelt did not like the job that he was doing. So he ran on his own platform called the Bull Moose Convention, so basically split the Republican nomination down the middle, which allowed the Democrats to come in and take the White House. So not only was Woodrow Wilson the first Democrat voted in since 1856, he was also the first Southerner voted in ever since 1848. And, I mean, of course, um, Andrew Johnson was president, who was from Tennessee after Lincoln's assassination, but he was not actually elected in, so Woodrow Wilson was the first Southerner elected in since 1848. Now, what he would do is he would, his big thing was keeping America out of the war. Most Americans did not want anything to do with what was happening over there in Europe. They, that was Europe's problem. We're staying here. Everything's fine. We want to keep it that way. And so what he would do is he would, he would make some changes that were indifferent, in, in for the lack of a better word. He would desegregate um, the U.S. Army, but he would still have would be white troops only in charge of the African troops. That's one thing he would do there. That's one thing that was a little out there. But one thing he would also go on to be noted for was with the horrible, view, horrible film called Birth of a Nation, it came in 1915, which basically glorifies the Ku Klux Klan. He would go on the record as crediting the Ku Klux Klan as saving the American way of life. I can't speak for that or against it or why he was thinking that, but that was a very common view of his day. But he was also really big on trying to keep the United States out of the war. He didn't want us to get involved. And he would actually get reelected in 1916 on the platform of he kept us out of war. But that would quickly be changed the next year when the Germans would start doing some pretty big things that would, that would tilt American point of view that it should be involved in the war. So more on that to come.